I'm Dave Rossum. I'm the founder of Rossum Electro Music, um, and uh, we've been continuing to build new synthesizer modules. Well, actually, over the last year, really focusing on just one module. We announced a couple of years ago at the Super Booth that we were going to build a sampler. We call it a simulator. And over this past year, we've been furiously working on that very complex project. We uh, shipped the first units, the first entire production batch of units, the beginning of April. They've been very well received. They were sold out by pretty much the moment they came onto the market. We've got another batch in process, and I'd love to tell you about uh, the features that ended up there and, and give you a full demo. It's much more than we had last year and even a little bit beyond what we showed in NAMM. Okay, so the assimilator, it's a sampler designed from the ground up for Eurorack. So it's all about control voltages. You can see there's 24 control voltage input jacks over here. So whenever I have a parameter, if I go to, uh, for example, look at pitch, I can see that it's being controlled by CVA. That means that it, the control voltage A of this particular channel is controlling its pitch. But if I press the button and see my selections here, I can control it from any one of the 24 jacks. So you can have a big patch modulation matrix within the assimilator here um, to be able to control things. There's a total of 20 different controllable parameters on each of the eight voices. So really, uh, in theory, you could use 160 control voltages. Of course, there's nowhere near enough space on the panel for that. But you really, you, you will use a lot of these control voltage jacks if you want to get the full use out of, out of assimilator. Um, I'll just give you some quick tours, mainly focusing on features that are, are recent or um, haven't been adequately covered in, in, in maybe some of the other things that are done. Um, as I mentioned, the pitch shifting is phenomenal. We can uh, uh, shift up five octaves and down as many as 15 or 20 without any aliasing. But um, one thing to remember, it is an eight channel sampler. In this case, I've got six channels that are loaded with samples. You get samples in off of the little SD card. You can load WAV files. It'll take eight, 16, 24 bit WAV files, uh, mono hysteria quite happily. And uh, um, then, uh, by trigger or by manually, we can trigger ourselves a little bit of a sound here. Um, this is a stereo sound here, but what I want to point out over here is not so much the sample list as what's called the mode over here. We see this one's in master mode, and these other are in a link mode. What a link mode means is while each one of these samples is uh, independently triggered by itself, the master, because they're link, will trigger all of them at once. So here we go. That's one of several different modes that you can have. In addition to link mode, if you've got a stereo sample, it will automatically uh, play as stereo if you put the second channel in the stereo right mode. We also have a mode called cycle, which what I'm going to do now is load a new set of samples into the demo. It's just loaded everything off the SD card. And this is demonstrating the cycle channel mode, where when I provide a trigger to channel one, it first triggers channel one, one but then triggers channel two, two and then three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, five. eight. So that those are a couple of the, uh, the channel modes. Another really interesting thing we've got is called the, uh, um, the zones mode. So if I load up, uh, um, a demonstration of zones here. We're going to get those same um, uh, channels here. I only have one channel loaded in here, but we see there are eight different zones here, and that the zone is controlled off of CV1A. Now, if we go back to the main page, we see CV1A down here. That means the data two knob is controlling the zones. So if I trigger the channel, one. Two, four, three, five, four, six, eight, seven. A, a control voltage now can control the different um, sounds that are coming, the eight, one, one of the eight different sounds. You can use that, for example, to make a drum kit, but you also can tell it to change continuously, and you can uh, synthesize really new, completely new sounds by jumping between the existing samples. Now, one of the really key features of the assimilator is phase modulation. So let me load up the phase modulation demo. Here we've got various instrumental sounds. One of my favorites is a trumpet being modulated by a piano. So here 
Uh, I actually can't play the piano sound for you the way it's patched right here, but let's let's go ahead and just press the button here. The data two knob in this case controls the pitch of the trumpet, but not the piano. So let's shift the trumpet down in pitch. We've got this wonderful digital. Over here, I have a violin that is going to be modulated, uh, or a bassoon that is being viol modulated by a violin. And in this case over here, what I've got is a stereo violin, and each channel is modulating the other. That kind of raspy sound that are phase modulating themselves. Um, as you adjust the modulation index, that raspiness comes in and then goes totally chaotic. So there's an awful lot yet to be explored with phase modulation. As far as I know, this is the first time any sampler has implemented phase modulation. And uh, um, so I think a lot of people are going to discover new sounds. One last really fun thing that I want to get and be able to demo to you is uh, uh, we use um, uh, a couple of different techniques to do uh, um, uh, shuttling and scrubbing on sounds. So here I have a demonstration of, of shuttling. If I fire off the sound here, missing something here because the sound's like this. I want to do what you do. You go. do do what I do. What else do you think you're missing out on? Gunfights, car chases, proper action and shit. Gunfights, car chases. So that's a lot of fun. Um, the other thing we can do, which is the second demo on this thing, is instead of using um, a shuttle wheel where we're changing, what we're doing really here, if, if you want to see uh, the, the, the mirrors and smoke behind this, all we're doing is modulating using linear FM, the sample sound with our knob number 1B up here. And uh, um, because the linear FM is both uh, um, uh, uh, forward and backward, that enabled me to get all around that sound with a, with a shuttle. If instead I um, um, go back to the, uh, the next demo up here, um, the scrub demo, ah, you heard it. Here, what I'm doing, you can bring up the loop window here. You can see there's a little tiny loop, a four sample loop, and I'm modulating with my control voltage the, uh, um, the start point of that loop. So as I move around, I can literally scrub the sound the same way you would move a, a, a record uh, around underneath the needle. Another really interesting sound. So you can get all these, the, that's the whole point of doing this for your rack is it's a really flexible module. We've got all these control voltages and there's so many different things you can do. I think really the sky's the limit. So that's a very quick tour of just a few of the things that a simulator can do, but you can learn a lot more at the website. So the best place to learn more about Rossum Electro music is on our website, rossumelectro.com. We have the full manual up there. It's about 50 pages, lots of pictures in it for the simulator. So you really can get a very detailed knowledge of what it can do and how it can do it. And uh, if that doesn't satisfy, by all means, just email us uh, um, either through Facebook or uh, um, at our uh, um, email address, customer service website, and we'll get back to you and answer your questions.